Okay, so part two is the continuation of the course, the part two application service uh, attacks. So you can see that this is the types of attack. So buffer overflow, injections, cross-site uh, scripting, cross-site request forgery, privilege escalation. So we are going to cover this, uh, uh, the application attack. So, so application attacks buffer overflow. So when more data are written into a buffer that it can hold. An anomaly, so vary programs while writing data to a buffer overruns the buffer boundaries and uh, varies adjacent memory locations. So for example, an attacker may introduce an extra code sending new instructions to the applications to the gain access to IT systems. If attackers know the memory layout of a program, they can, inter uh, they can intentionally uh, feed input that buffer cannot store and overwrite areas that hold execute code, replacing it with their own code. So this is uh, one of the notable things. So we need to be, we need to be extra care on this. So the next one you can see here is over top 10 applications uh, security risk uh, as a comparison of 2013s uh, 2017s. Over uh, is a number one uh, so organizations. Uh, you can find all the all the informations in the website directly. So you just Google it. So OWASP uh, top 10 application security risk, you know, so you'll get a lot of information over there in the Google. So this is a comparison. So you can see is A1 injections. So 2017, so the injections, uh, so how it, it changed vastly. So you can see all the information here. So the applications attacks injections. So occurs when untrusted data is sent to an and interpreters as a part of the commands or query. The most common falls into the following category escape characters not filters correctly, type handling not properly done, conditional errors, time delay. So the way to define against this attack is always to filter input. So ex best example is SQL injections OS LDA XML. So the next one is applications attacker attacks, cross site scriptings a cross site request forgery. So the cross-site attacks uh, this most common method to prevent cross-site uh, request uh, forgery attacks is, is to depend uh, is to append CS, CSR token to each request and associate them with the user sessions. Such tokens should at their uh, minimum be unique per uh, user sessions, but can also the unique per request. So this is how we, we can prevent using this technique. So these cross-site definitions you can see this is across when an applications include untrust data in new web page without proper validations or escaping or updating an existing web page with user supply data using a browser API that can create HTML or JavaScript like example you can see there. So this is the best one of the best example. So applications attack privilege escalations. So the privilege escalations uh, is the, the act of exploit exploiting a bug, designs flaw or configurations oversight in operating systems or software applications to gain elevated access to this resource that are normally protected from an applications or users. This is uh, one of the important thing, the configuration. So, you know, sometimes the administrator, uh, administrator is not uh, aware of this. So uh, this this is kind of, you know, we need to uh, make sure so everything is uh, in order. So the next one is application attacks, a prevention response. So you can see the very good example of this, a good code practice, see OVASP, uh, uh, the website on the website, you can find that OVASP. Uh, filters and validate any user inputs. So use a web application for uh, firewalls or WAF uh, 
build security into software development lifecycle have an incident response plan in it plan in place this is this those are very uh, good practice so zero day exploitations a very famous one uh, every everyone you know aware of this so zero day exploitations so an attack the exploit a previously unknown security vulnerability it may take advantage of uh, security vulnerabilities on the same day that vulnerability becomes generally known. So, best example is Stuxnet. So, the Stuxnet, the malicious computers own, uh, own, own worm target computers used for manufacturing uh, purpose in several countries, including Iran, India, and Indonesia, etc. So, the other example is a Sony zero day attack. So, if you can recall it or Google it, Sony picture was a victim of a zero day exploit in late 2014 so this is uh, one of the best example so so you can pre there's a lot of way to prevent how to prevent uh, zero day attacks so employee the most advanced security software so keep sec keeping security software up to date updating your browsers implementing implementing security protocol so these are four major steps to prevent the zero day attack so other ones impersonations masquerading replay attacks so the attack if pretending to be someone or something to gain unauthorized access to the to, to your systems capture network traffic via eavesdroppings then re-establishing a communication system by replying capture traffic using spoof authentications credentials preventions tokens uh, authentications MFA so we can use these techniques to prevent this so, so input this 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 is one of the uh, techniques they are using. So drive manipulations driver a program that controls a device printer media keyboard etc. Yes, you know this this all are uh, the the source of uh, thing they are using. Uh, sometimes the drivers is not up to date. You know something so the hackers can misuse this so uh, shimming shimming is a uh, creating a library or modifying an existing one to buy boss the drivers and perform a function other than the one for which the APA was created so other ones are refactoring a yeah, set of techniques used to identify the flow and then modify the internal structures of the code without changing the code visible behavior so one of the good way cryptographic attack so cryptographic attacks so I see there's a birthday attacks there's a three types uh, you can see there in the picture on the right side so birthday attacks an attack and a cryptographic flash uh, crypto, crypto, cryptographic hash that looks for hash collision exploiting the one-to-one -one nature of hashing functions so user doing some uh, you know some some transmissions and then open VPN servers, you know, so blow phishing zippers, they, whatever the, they are using, the attacker steal the information from there. So this kind, of, this is one of the things you know. This if users are not aware of this. So the next one is a, uh, you can see there's known plain text cipher, and the attacker attempts to derive a uh, cryptographic key by user using pair of known plain text along with the corresponding cipher text the same as here on right side you can see the picture here's encryption and decryption uh, algorithms you know so whatever the algorithm algorithm the uh, victim missions has you know the the eavesdrops uh, functions you know they use the techniques they use the uh, gather the information and decrypt so this is a how the the small uh, picture so can understand easily. So frequency analyze are looking at the block of an encrypted message to determine if any common pattern exists. So this this is also so one of the things. So you need to analyze the data. Uh, so encrypts and decrypts. Cryptographic attacks, password attacks. So dictionary attack is a systematically entering each word in a dictionary as a password it's a very important one a dictionary attack is is a try to you know 
he try, tries to guess at the key of ciphertext by uh, attempting many different common passwords and possible passwords that are likely to be used by humans. Yet, yet dictionary attacks uh, sometimes you know, makes use of what is called a dictionary, which stores common English words or first uh, password are ready to uh, guess as a key. Dictionary attacks are more uh, more efficient than your brute force uh, attack. You know, as uh, as they don't have to try nearly many combinations. But with the downside that if the key is not contained in the dictionary, it will never successfully find it. For example, let's say that Bob encrypted his hard drive with the password Hunter Two. Alice then use a dictionary attack to try every possible word in the dictionary. If Hunter 2 pop password is the dictionary, is in the dictionary, then Alice will have the key and be able to get access to Bob's hard drive. However, if the Bob password was a uh, very uh, you know 20, 21 character uh, numbers mix of like you know. Uh, yes, small letters, uh, capital letters, you know, the mix of uh, the very big passwords, they're uh, creating a very big password, they yeah, have first, a uh, special character, everything. So that is unlikely to be in Alice dictionary, which generally contains a very uh, variety of English words or variations and co uh, common passwords, you know. So Alice would never be able to gain access to his hard drive. Eventually would exhaust his dictionary without a positive match. So the brute force is a systematically attempt, attempting all possible combinations as the combinations of letters, numbers, symbols, usually automated. Yeah, same as the most common easy understanding of example of the brute force attack is the dictionary attack to crack the passwords. In the attackers use a password dictionary that contain millions of words that can be used as a password. Most of the time WordPress <laughs> WordPress users uh, face uh, brute force attacks against their website. <laughs> yeah. So rainbow tables, rainbow tables, all of the purpose password hashes are computed in the advanced, and those hash values are compared with the pa password database. So rainbow tables are fast and effective on cracking password because each password is hashed the same way. For example, if a hacker has a rainbow uh, table with the hash of the uh, for the password example is Johnny 12. Any user, the user that password will have the same hash, so the password can easily be cracked. So this is one of the best example. So then last one is a pa pass the hash. An attacker attempt to authenticate to remote server or service by intercepting password hashes on the network. So this one is a, a pass the hash attack. Hash the attack is an exploit in where an attacker steals a hashed user credential and without cracking it, reuse it to trick an authentication system into creating a new authenticated sessions on the same network. One of the example is free tool called PW Dump. It's a very famous tool. So you can just Google it and then YouTube also you can also find more information how to use the tool to get the uh, password using the hash, you know, the steel hash, whatever that. So you can also try it out. So which comes in more different variants and which sometimes contains small words. Okay, be careful on this. <laughs> okay. Let's practice questions. Let's go for it. During a breach investigation, so you notice that the attacker entered the database through a web front and applications by manipulating the database code to exploit uh, vulnerabilities. What is the most likely name of name for this type of attack? Answer: SQL injection. Okay. Next question: so Which of the following type of attack? is the result of software vulnerabilities and is caused by supplying more data than is expected in an input field. Answer. Buffer overflow attack. Okay guys, that's it. Uh, the, okay, one more, uh, one more, one more questions. 
uh, which for which form of attack uses special programs that attempts all possible character combination to determine passwords answer brute force attack okay that's it for uh, for today's for for this course so uh, we will see you on mm, next video so please subscribe uh, channel press the bell button see you bye bye